Hi, Marco Di Stefano here, and welcome to this new video of the Virtual Orchestration series. The reason I'm doing this video today is because uh, I received many requests from uh, many people that have uh, followed the other videos where I show my uh, orchestral template, how I actually have built it with using Cubase, Vienna Ensemble Pro and Limur. And uh, many people ask me if I ever will share uh, this work. Uh, so I've been thinking a lot about it and the th first things I'm gonna do now is uh, sharing uh, the Limur project which by the way is uh, not something which I did, I did from uh, scratch but I reused the, the project which already Mikkel Zilmer, uh, you will find the details on the description, already shared some time ago and uh, I actually extended and modified many things of it but uh, I must admit I used uh, the core part for the discussion between uh, Cubase and Limor comes from this, uh, uh, from this project. So what I want to do here is that I want just to quickly showcase my orchestral template and then I want to uh, give you a, uh, some uh, explanation of the project Limur uh, extended and uh, then uh, you will find in the description the link to my website where you can download it. As I said already, so uh, I'm using VN Ensemble Pro and the reason I'm doing this uh, is already explained uh, in another video. Uh, but most uh, important is the fact that I can enable and disable tracks. Uh, so that means that I can have a huge template on, only with the 32 gigabyte of RAM because I will just actually load in memory the instruments which I'm really loading. And uh, you will see later the enabling disabling is uh, very quick. Uh, you can see that VN Ensemble Pro here, so uh, you have different instances, each instance, uh, so one for the woodwinds, the brass, strings, uh, uh, the, this is more tutti, some mix instruments and percussion, Hans Zimmer strings high, Hans Zimmer strings low, and uh, uh, evolutions, but this one is still built on progress. So far there is only the chamber evolutions. The way this uh, template is built is that, as you can see, for each of the channels, so if now, for example, I'm going to enable uh, the piccolo flute, voila, you can see that in this channel I have all the uh, sounds from uh, Spitfire Woodwinds piccolo flute, and so, of course, locked with the UACC, and then I can uh, easily switch the articulation, and so on. Then what I have is that in Cubase I have all the same instruments which are referring uh, to the channel. So for example here look VN Ensemble Pro MIDI 1 1 which is exactly the same channel which was set up in VN Ensemble Pro. And uh, from here actually I'm playing uh, everything which is in VN Ensemble Pro and by default in the template everything is disabled. So now let's give a look at what the uh, Limur uh, project looks like. So the first page of the Limur project here is where I actually have a uh, very few buttons. So to toggle woodwinds, brass, strings, uh, the mix and percussions. Actually, this allows me to see only the, uh, the tracks which are, have con uh, actually content. For example, let's suppose that so far I had something here in the piccolo flute in the oboe so if now i click on this button here you will see that everything stays if there is data in it and the same concept is for the other ones so now let me undo uh, then another thing which is uh, very very important is uh, this uh, button here so first of all you can already see that uh, depending on the track which i'm selecting in cubase here i got the name of the track so the way this is done is already explained into another video that you can find on my channel. And now, for example, look what happened here. Let's say, for example, I have the flute. This is a, a VN Ensemble Pro. I now click, now the button is green, so actually I need to make it red. And now again green. Voilà, you can see the flute now is loaded. Now I click, it's red, and the flute now disappeared. Uh, meaning that I'm actually, I'm able, every time I want to play a track, I click on the track, I click on this button, the track is enabled, and then I can play with it. So actually, you really have all the template at just one fingertip. 
from uh, from you from your keyboard. Uh, another important part of this uh, project Limur template, so so far I want to say this is something which I did completely myself, then is also with this one, the quick controls. So uh, in Cubase it's uh, very important to use quick controls because uh, you can set them up here, quick controls. Actually these are set to specific uh, CC MIDI change which are then mapped into here. Meaning that, for example, if I have my now my alto flute, and if I'm moving on the quick control, the one, so you can see that the name here it's up to date, because uh, for this one, for this specific track, alto flute, the this one corresponds to dynamics, expression, vibrato, and so on, and here the mix. Then, for example, if I change and now I go to the Bernard Herrmann toolkit. So you can see that things have changed. Now if I go uh, to uh, Spitfire Albion 5, you can see that here the labels change. And so the labels change depending on the selection on the track, meaning that from this panel, I have my fader, actually. It's, it's, it's uh, exactly a fader. And from here, I can record automations. The next things which uh, I think everyone wants to have is this one, is the articulations. Uh, for the articulation, there has been a huge, huge work because you have to set the map into Limur and then you have to set, uh, set up also the expression maps. So that means that for each of this track, you have an expression map here set up with a remote one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which exactly correspond to this, uh, uh, this uh, channel here, this send message here, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and so on for all of them. Let's go to the strings where there are a lot of articulations, for example, the chamber strings. Voila. These are all the articulations which I can switch. And then you can see here that the mapping is exactly the same if you follow the sequence here. Uh, that means that I can click on the articulation here and automatically change here. And if I, I am recording at the same time, the change of the articulation will also be recorded. Finally, the last things of this template is that you have VST MIDI controls. So for example, if you don't want to, want to, if you don't want to use the quick controls, but instead of recording automation, you want to really record a uh, change uh, on the MIDI channels themselves, like for example, on the CC1, CC2, and so they will appear in the editor, you can go from there. Again, this is something which is configured depending on what you select. Automatically, you get the correct setup with uh, all the parameters that can influence the, the actually the, the VST. And this is done for all of them. So you can see here that there is a tab that depending on what you selected, the tab change. And so you have the microphones that change here and these also change. Voila, that's all. So this is the, the Limur template which I'm going to, sh uh, to, to share today. Uh, so you can find more information about how to set up in my previous videos. I'm not going into detail now uh, because actually I'm really thinking about uh, finding uh, the best way to share what I've done also on Cubase and the VN Ensemble Pro. Um, so if you are interested about that, so you can leave me a comment and let me know. Uh, but yes, I'm working on it, so you will have news soon. Thank you very much for watching and uh, see you in the next one.